thank you so much for doing this. Um, my uh, the, Our podcast is about your guys' journey in music and how you got to where you are now. And, of course, we'll talk a lot about your the Christmas duet. I just listened to it. It's so – it's amazing. Um, so, yeah, definitely talk about that as well. Um, so I, I, I did read that you guys have quite different stories. So maybe we can get uh, – Consuela, do you want to start and, and kind of tell me where you grew up? Um, well, I was, firstly, I, I really love your backdrop. This is the greatest room. Isn't it beautiful? It's so cool. It's no, so thank cool. you. It's love just it. my, my loft. <laughs> I dressed it up a little bit. I love it. Thank you. Um, so I was born in New York and okay. moved to LA when I was two. Um, my family's in the film industry. And so kind of a nomadic life, moved to London and just, um, you know, really... I've, I've lived a very eclectic, but wonderfully rich and meeting extraordinary people and, um, and you know, being schooled in the UK and then and moving back to LA uh, when I was 17. And so it's, yeah, it's been, it's been a very interesting journey and a lot of stories, which is mm -hmm. really creating the ability to, um, I've always said I wouldn't be a singer if I wasn't a songwriter. So <laughs> definitely been my journey for sure. Yes. And how old were you when you moved to the UK? Fairly was, young. I was six and a half. Oh, wow. So yeah. you just spend most of your, your adolescence there for sure. I did. I was a, I was a gymnast. Okay. I looked like a little miniature Mike Tyson. I was in a squad. Wow. You know that? Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. I, I actually trained with Olympic <laughs> coaches in Paris and yeah, but because these beautiful, long, lanky, amazing you know, English gymnasts, and there's the American, like, yeah. a little bit more muscular. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, good. It, was, it was a great way to go into the UK, let me tell you. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, and Milan, how did you, uh, where did you grow up? UK as well? I was born in Taiwan, and I lived in Taiwan growing up. Wow. And then, um, I basically in Taiwan studied music, theater, dance. Um, and when I was about 19, I was discovered by a fashion photographer and brought to New York. And then wow. I ended up in London working in fashion and then back in New York and then back in London. So, so yes, yeah, so I've been, been all over and, and mm -hmm. had lovely experiences. And I've also like worked in theater like most of my life and, mm -hmm. and been on many, many stages and many, done many shows. And it's been very fun, very mm -hmm. fun. You said you were discovered as a as a fashion designer. How did you how did you get into that? No, I was discovered as a model actually. Oh, when as I, a model. I, okay. Yeah, when I was younger, I was much much prettier. Ah oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no um, yeah, I was I was uh, sent to New York to meet with um, a very famous fashion designer and who is now one of my competitors, and um, <laughs> and uh, I ended up staying in New York and just fell in love with New York City and ended up performing in theatre here and, and dancing with Paul Abdul, Puffy wow. Coy. And, and, <laughs> and then I ended up um, meeting my mentor, uh, who is a man named Arnold Skazi, who trained me in fashion and taught me everything I needed to know for my own brand. And mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I ended up on television with Project Runway, Top Model. Sure. Lots of, lots of shows and things like that. And and then I had my own show on Bravo for a while called The Milan Show. Mm -hmm. And then um, my column in OK Magazine, things like that. So it's been, it's been a fun life. I've had a lot of experiences, but I've also uh, been able to, through all my work, been able to give back to many different charities and organizations and universities and schools and, and mentored many students and things. So it's been very fun. Yeah, the, doesn't the the new song we'll talk about? Uh, well, the cover of "I'll Be Home for Christmas" that that has uh, a tie to a charity as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I want to talk to you about that. We'll get to there in in a, in a little bit. But so, how does music tie into into your? I, I mean, you d definitely talked about musical theater and everything. How? When did you really get into music, then, Milan? Well, I I mean, I've always been in music because I I trained in first in piano flute tuba and the violin mm -hmm. and then i uh, did vocal training as well when i was i started when i was about three and a half oh wow and, and, and I, I know so it's like, old right? <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how old you are doing that oh my goodness <laughs> and then i found myself um like Sort of, I, I ended up being the voice of ESPN Extreme Sports for a while. And really, even, yeah. that's that's a quite a 
Which other opposite different. end of the scale, I would think. Yeah, so different and so fun. But then I got like, I had this, I love, I always loved clothes and I always loved fashion. And so I was sort of, I was in a crossroads in my life and I wanted to decide where I wanted to go. And I went towards fashion, but I always kept performing. And, and um, yeah, then the single came up of something stupid when we mm-hmm. did that this, this year. And shockingly enough, it charted um, top 10 around the world. So, <laughs> which was so unexpected. I mean, especially for someone of, you know, of my age and things like that. It was just, you know, it was amazing. So That's so cool. Um, well, I'll go back to you real quick, uh, Consuelo. So how did you get into music? So um, I, so I, after I finished gymnastics, it was, mm-hmm. either, I was basically, you know, working in a squad. You, it was taking up between either school or gymnastics. And mm-hmm. so my parents said, look, I think it's time for you to really focus in on school. And so I tried out for the choir okay. and I didn't get in. And I was so upset. I was really, so, I was like, Oh my God. I've got, and I was 11 at this point. And so I then trained for six months and I then ended up having the loudest voice in that choir. <laughs> that sense. Um, but no, and I, I was a flautist, which we share in common. And, oh, amazing. Uh, and then I ended up actually getting signed to Sanctuary Records in the UK when I was 21 wow. and had an incredible gift of touring. And, you know, what I love about music more than any other creative medium on the planet is, is that it's so versatile that you mm-hmm. can be in so many different genres. So, you know, my first record was very kind of in the Dido trip hop, that kind of vein. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, moving to LA, I had a seven piece male rock band and <laughs> our first single charted on the dance charts. And that kind of completely pivoted and changed the trajectory of, of my life and the kind of course of my music career. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because you're in you're in the dance world, and I didn't know that you did the, the earlier stuff more like in the Dido lane. Was that what originally got you signed to the label? It was. I wrote this amazing song with a songwriter called Nicholas Whitecroft, mm-hmm. and um, I had a fantastic German manager named Christian Seidel. So when I was living in London, I was 19 at the time. He would fly me between London and Germany, and I was shooting music videos. He found it called Surfer actually, and so we were. I was working with a rock band in Germany. And this beautiful song called Let Love Wash Over Me, um, which again was, you know, really in that trip hop vein. Um, Sanctuary loved it. And yeah, I got signed. That's so cool. That must have been a really validating moment for you, I'd imagine. It was incredible. Because, you know, this and music is so hard. It's, it's like any creative medium is, is mm-hmm. so challenging. I think when finally someone wakes up, it's like when you chart it, you know, mm-hmm. when someone yeah. wakes up and just says, wow, I really appreciate what you're doing and, and I can see you and I really mm-hmm. understand you. I think that's all we look for in life, right? It's just sure. to feel connected and to feel like people get you and, yeah. and appreciate what you do. So it was, it was, it was an incredible gift. That's amazing. And you had the opportunity to tour, you, you were saying? I did. Did I you enjoy love, that? I love touring. I love, love. So Germany has been a very big market for me because uh-huh. my, um, one of my videos feel so alive was banned in 10 countries what (laughs) tell me about that and why (laughs) um so (laughs) of course um now it's not for the reasons you think it would be right so okay um the the title's called feel so alive and it Mm -hmm. really is about that it's a um a very kind of fred astaire story and love story and um and so the director tim cox came to me and said look i had an experience with this morticianer when I was younger. And mm-hmm. would you be interested? See, so you, now you're looking it up. <laughs> would you be interested in, in actually- Busted. <laughs> 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 what I experienced as a child in this morgue. And so we filmed in a working morgue and I'll just let you, you have to go and see it because Yes, but That's... anyway, Germany loved it. So it started. But oh, 10 other oh, countries oh, didn't. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, Milan, so you've, have you had a chance to tour? I know like musical, like musicals and stuff tour around the country. Were, were you ever a part of that? You know, I never, um, I never toured with musicals. I did dance with different people. Mm-hmm. On- 
at award shows and things like that and and had to go to LA often for that but um I never really went on tour I was more like a a Broadway person and things mm -hmm. so I ended up you know doing that um but he was, may do this is this well yeah this I may be, I mean coming up right. I'm, I'm thinking once we get out of COVID situations mm -hmm. um I'll probably go on a European tour actually and do something that way and That's then cool. maybe settle down I always had this fantasy of settling down in like somewhere like Vegas or San Tropez or something like a Frank Sinatra type or something like that you know oh yeah <laughs> Um, because I, I am, I'm so enamored by that genre and mm -hmm. that era, and I just it would just be so fun, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it, yeah, that would be that would be amazing to have like a residency, so to speak. Right? Like, yeah, yeah, that would be very cool. I and then, so a few sorry, my, go ahead. Oh no, a few of my clients have residencies or had residencies actually, so it's like. It's always fun to see what they do. And, and yeah, I saw that you, you've done work with Celine Dion, who had like a major, I think her show ran for like years there. It might even still be running, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> she had a major success out there in Vegas. So yeah. very cool. Well, then how did you guys link up? How did you, how did you guys meet? We met through a uh, celebrity fashion photographer named Patrick McMullen in 2015. Okay. And uh, she was performing at a, a, a venue in New York City called Excel, I believe. Yep. And um, such and, a great venue. It, yeah, was, and, it was so fun. And Patrick was doing his uh, annual St. Patrick's Day parade, yeah. uh, not parade, but a uh, uh, party actually. And mm -hmm. he was like, you have to meet my friend Consuelo. And we met. And, and then she ended up walking in my shows at Fashion Week. And, we ended up partnering on a couple of different things with Soho News and and just it's been a very long term friendship and 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 it's been really lovely, really fun. Mm -hmm. Well, so well, what made you go into music? Like, what sparked you to do the cover of Something Stupid? Um, it was just something for fun. I I never really thought it would do anything. I just thought, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna put some put a track down and see what it does and and um we i got the chance to work with a couple of really great producers on it mm -hmm. um, alex davies and uh giovanni damiani who have worked with like miley cyrus codeline um like ennio morricone people like that so mm -hmm. um it was sort of like it was i was very honored that i got the chance to work with those that mm -hmm. Talent, um, because I, I'm very uh, humble when it comes to my singing because I'm I'm not really like you know a professional singer. <laughs> so. Well, you are. <laughs> I mean, you're so <laughs> charted. <laughs> the new one is doing well. So now, honey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thank now you. you are. It's on the resume. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. What, 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 why did you choose? Yeah, why did you choose something stupid? Was it just a song that you that drew like what drew I, you to that song? I love the that era of music. Mm -hmm. and I love the Rat Pack and I love Nancy Sinatra and and um the girl that I duetted with, um Jury from Emergency Tiara, she was um she's just a lovely, lovely person. And I just thought, oh, it'd be so nice to mix our voices together and see mm -hmm. what happens and um and it was, I mean, I guess what they say, the rest is history, I guess. Sure, sure, sure. Talking enough, it's like, wow, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and then you you guys obviously decided to do a song. Why Why? Um, I'll Be Home for Christmas? You know, it's such a beautiful classic song. Mm -hmm. I think especially right now when we are all struggling and nothing kind of makes any sense and the semblance of what does home mean, right? And, and being home and just being with friends and family, I think that's really kind of united all of us. Mm -hmm. And I think this the sentiment of the song really resonates to that. Um, so it was just such a gift, not only of course that Milan and I are so close, but to be able to give back kind of in this moment right now. And so we shot at the Vanderbilt Museum, which is my great, great grandfather's home. And so, the whole sentiment of the video actually is kind of planes, trains, and automobile. Uh, automobile oh, wow. Right? Okay. Uh, well, tell me. So, where you shot the video was your great grandfather's house? Is that what you said? Yes. Great okay. grandfather. He donated okay. it to his, he was an incredible voyager and he collected these insane artifacts from mummies 
to mollusks. <laughs> like, you have to go there, right? It's That's so it's, rad. It's, it's so much yeah. fun. And um, and so in 19- Is it like, sorry to cut you off, is it like a historic, is it like a landmark? Like you could go and like- yeah. It's a museum and planetarium. Oh my gosh, okay. That's so rad. I totally invite you. Absolutely, you have to come and- you know, uh, I would love guests. to. My whole family will bring the family and we'll come out. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So, so he so, donated his property in 1950 because he he literally said, look, I want my life and my excursions and the things that I've found and discovered never to be forgotten. Mm-hmm. So it was so beautiful. That's what he did. Wow. That's really amazing. And you got to shoot the video there. We did. Was that did you choose that place just because it it, it meant so much to you personally? It it does, you know, especially I'm I sit on the board of the museum. Um, it's a place that I Really, I, my great grand, my grandmother was on the board before me, and mm-hmm. I, took, I take amazing pride in it, and so it was such a gift to be able to take Milan there and to beautiful. share in this journey with him, and again, that kind of that really resonated to the whole story too. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a beautiful place of like peace and discovery, and and it's just I, I'm I love nature and just being in that environment mm-hmm. on the water. It's just so beautiful. So. Mm-hmm. so beautiful. And do you guys have any plans to continue the collaborations and the duets, or is this a one-time thing? What are you thinking? We've talked about it, so we'll see what happens. You know, see what happens in the future. But I may, I'm going to be going back to London soon, and and we'll 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 we're, we're going to keep discussing it. Yeah, but yeah. for now, just the Christmas song, um, getting that out there. Uh, have you had a chance to, like, are you guys planning on doing any performances with it? We are tonight, actually. Okay, tell me about it. What's going on tonight? We have an Instagram live going on at 5 p.m., which is very cool. And then we're performing two songs on a network called Pop Dust, and that starts at 6. And then the... Tonight? So two performances tonight? Yep. Wow. And then the the video debuted on Hollywood Life today. Wow, that's awesome. Um, So this will be your first Instagram live? tonight how do you feel about it Are you guys kind of nervous or excited it'll be fun it'll be fun you know i think okay. it's um it comes from such a good place the song and the two of us singing it together it's just i think it's just something that um it should just be fun you know not it shouldn't mm. be too nerve-wracking you know he's amazing I, i'm a little <laughs> bit nervous this is for for me this is the first time actually in four years i finished my last tour in Europe and my last single went to number five in the US and I've uh-huh. been on a sabbatical building my company. So this is really an incredible gift to tonight. Wow. Yeah. And performing and this is embarking on a very different journey now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's kind of you guys, proud. Are you guys, do you have anything planned as far as the, how the performance is going to go or what, how are you guys going to be in the same room playing like like how you are right now like how do you how do you see this uh going well we um we have a a accompanist named michael ferrari Mm -hmm. on wicked on broadway and a few of the other broadway shows (laughs) oh wow (laughs) he's going to be accompanying us and we'll be in the same room performing um and uh yeah it'll be it'll be fun it'll be very fun that's amazing. That's amazing. And then tell me about the proceeds. Are the proceeds from the song purchase going to um, to an organization? Tell me how the, the tie in to the organization. So uh, my portion of the proceeds are actually going to go to an organization called Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS. Mm-hmm. That, um, they do quite a bit of work for different AIDS organizations and uh, uh, research and funding for research and things like that, as well as helping people in the theatrical community. Um, and I think the theatrical community has been hit very hard, so hard. right now. Oh my gosh, and, yes. It's, um, it's, it's hard to know. I think everything that we can, we can do is it's quite important for, you know, for us to give back as much as possible. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that is and- what we're doing. So the entire proceeds are actually going to charity. So this is really something that's for Milan and I, like especially right now, this is, you know, something that's just important, you know, including ourselves. It's, you know, it's been really, tr- you know, just the most trying times and then yeah. and just no one knows what's happening. And, you know, and I pray for, 
pray for some resolution. And I, you know, I think, I think, I hope we're close, but what's yeah. been going on in the U.S. in the last 24 hours is just, it's, it's, it's really it's, terrifying. Yeah, it's scary. I mean, yeah, the numbers are going down and they went back up and it's just, yeah, nobody knows. It's, it's, <laughs> it's such a, and, and not to, and, and not to mention like the artists that are all, all you know struggling but like you said the the crew and the people that count on doing you know like a tour manager or somebody like that like all those people are out of work they can't you know yeah. it's not just the you know the the face of it it's like their whole crew and and their whole team are kind of out of work we yeah. actually during so my company so amused during the beginning part of the pandemic we started a concert series called Saves. And oh, so cool. a lot of our So Who Muse members who are normally on tour, Broadway stars, um, musicians, and really creating a forum and a live streaming platform for a way in which that they could either create you know, ticket sales or tips by donation or mm -hmm. to performance to charity. And each one of our members just, you know, they made a significant amount. It's not life fault, but it's it's something because it's yeah these times sure uh, and so that was really amazing and we would do sound checks with them the night before it's really honoring who they are because we don't know when this is gonna be yeah. like 2022 2023 yeah. so i think all these various different platforms and giving artists a chance to do what they do mm -hmm. themselves you know what i mean so i just that's amazing. That's amazing that you guys, with the success you both have achieved over the years to kind of give back to those people and kind of give them a platform to to make some money, you know, during this time. And that's that's really amazing that you guys are that you guys are doing that. It's so cool. Um, did the was the pandemic and the coronavirus, you know, have that the pandemic happening? Was that kind of what drew you guys together to do the duet or was it would have been something that you guys would have done anyway? Um, I think it would have been something we would have done anyway, you know, mm -hmm. I think, um, it was just, you know, a long time coming. We, um, when I was in New York last July for the opening night of Moulin Rouge, uh, we went to a piano bar and sang together at the piano bar. Oh, and wow. It was so fun. A place called uh, Don't Tell Mamas on 46th Street. And uh, we got the chance to sing together and then everything just kind of grew organically from that. So at that moment, you guys were like, we need to do something. Yeah. <laughs> we have to do something. Yeah. What, what did you guys, do you remember what you play or what did you guys perform? At the piano bar. Summertime from the ocean. Oh, cool. Very cool. My favorite song. I have performed that song in every version on the planet. Reggae. Really? Yes. Classic pop. <laughs> <laughs> Reggae. That's awesome. <laughs> I love that song so much. As I said, Music's that amazing thing. You can create into any different medium you want. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Thank you guys so, so much for, for chatting with me today. I like really, really, really appreciate it. You guys have been so fun and so cool. I really appreciate your time. I really Thank hope you your so next much. gets better. And oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I do have one more question for you both. Sure. Um, do you, I want to know if I can get an answer from each of you individually, but I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists, whether that be a, you know, fashion designer for you, Milan, or, or dancer or, or a vocalist. Do you have any advice for aspiring artists? Go ahead. No, no, you. Okay. I think um, my, the advice that I give most people is um, to work really hard because nothing is going to just come to you. Um, and also to um, create within your learn what your branding is learn what you're best at and and just kind of create within those those dimensions and things i love it um i would say if you are wanting to be an artist make sure you are a musician make sure to fundamentally learn either the guitar or the piano have the roots of knowing an instrument both from a melodic standpoint and a rhythmic standpoint because you can support yourself in anything that you do as a vocalist, because as you have that ability to always control what you're doing. Um, I think that also throughout my career, I have been told to change hair color, my name, and a thousand things, right? And I think understanding and knowing your own identity truly 
as an artist and standing firm to what you know instinctively feels right. That's it's the expression, trust your gut. That's all you have in life. When someone is leading you down a path where it doesn't feel right and you feel like you're compromising yourself, absolutely stop, take a stand, listen to yourself and, and, uh, and come back and stay true to yourself. It's, it took me a long time to learn that lesson. And yeah, so that's what I would say. Bring me the best world.